International Women's Day is a time to step back and assess the progress that has been made to create a better world for women. Latin America is a region of the globe where women have made great strides in some areas but faced extreme challenges and dangerous risks in others. Joining me now to reflect on the conditions surrounding women in Latin America is our political analyst, Laura Cross. And Laura, welcome to the show. Thank you, Elaine. You know, Latin America has a strong record for female leadership. The region has more female presidents, has seen more female presidents than anywhere else in the world. Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Bolivia has the highest number of women in its parliament. So would you say that their representation is seen in their legislation? The short answer is yes. The fact that these women presidents have been in power has translated into gains in gender equity policies. We have to remember we're talking about three women who are not just women in power, but women who historically have a strong commitment to women's equality. President Michelle Bachelet of Chile was the first leader of UN Women, and she has a history in gender public policy. With her reign in Chile, she's been able to bring about policies that have closed the wage gap in that country. And then we have Cristina Fernandez, who has brought about gay marriage in Argentina, LGBT rights. Uh, both countries are moving toward, in some ways, decriminalization of abortion and reproductive rights. In Brazil, the situation's a little bit more complicated. Brazil, like many other countries in Latin America, has a quota representation system which means that the list of candidates have to include 30% women in, in the party's list. But then that doesn't translate into representation. And that's one of the things that we've seen, that it's not just a question of women in quotas or gaining power, but also what kind of a commitment there is to women's rights. In Mexico, for example, with the quota system, women were running as candidates, gaining power, and then stepping down for their husbands. So the really important thing is who's going to be willing to fight for women's rights once they take power. Would you say that these female politicians, female leaders in the region have seen as much support as their male counterparts? Absolutely not, Elaine. It's very obvious. You look at the case of Cristina Fernandez and a large part of her first term when her husband, the former president, Nestor Kirchner, was alive, she was talked about as a puppet of his, as if women couldn't rule in their own right. And uh, Dilma Rousseff, during the impeachment process, she claimed that there was a very strong current of misogyny in the whole process of stripping her of her elected positions, and many analysts agree. So that's been a problem throughout the area. What studies have shown is that men support women in public offices when it's context-driven. That is, that they'll say, okay, our party can win if we have her, but there's not that same deep commitment to gender equality and having women there. In Latin America, people are accustomed to women being, at times, the power behind the throne, but they're not so used to them being the occupants of the throne. What about when it comes to business and, and female business leaders, CEOs? In business, it's interesting, the wage differential at the upper levels has decreased some, but they also face a lot of discrimination um, at all levels. There's only approximately 8% of women on executive committees of, uh, in a recent survey of businesses throughout the Latin America region, and some 5% in, on board positions. And yet what we know from this same study is that companies that have women on their boards and on their committees actually outperform the other companies. So there's a long process to kind of break down a lot of those stereotypes that have difficulty seeing women in leadership positions. Let's talk about getting to those positions, um, college education, university education. Would you say that girls and young women are given the same access and opportunity to get that type of education as, as young men? It's gotten a lot better. Fortunately, there's been a real concerted effort on the part of governments with a big push from international organizations and non-governmental organizations to increase access of girls in particular to education. And again, this is because they're looking at studies that are saying, of all the things that correlate to better development in a nation and better economic results, one of the highest is education for girls and women. 
So they've been working to decrease that differential, and now in many of our countries we have equal access for girls at the primary school level, at the secondary level. In fact, in many places it's boys that are dropping out more because they have better earning capacity, and if they need an income it will be the boys who drop out. It's when you get up again to those higher levels that you begin to see the problems. There are even more girls that are graduating at, at some graduate levels, but in the jobs and in the researcher positions, we're beginning to see the situation flip, and there's still male dominance. Well, that being said, it seems like there's this big push internationally to bring more girls uh, in the math and science fields, pushing STEM earlier uh, in their lives. Would you say that we're seeing the same commitment in Latin America? Yes, there has been an emphasis on this. And what we're seeing, and this is the positive force that's causing it, is there are a lot more girls and women who are interested in going into those fields. So there's beginning to be a parity in those fields, traditionally closed or thought inappropriate for women as well. But again, it doesn't translate at the highest levels. And there in Latin America, only 46% of researchers in science and technology, for example, are women. There's still a glass ceiling there when it comes to higher levels. And one of the big reasons is that women are dropping out because of motherhood. We have not resolved the problem of how you combine a career and motherhood in a way that distributes those two tasks evenly enough for women to not make, have to make an either or choice. And is that because of the attitude that women, more women should be home to take care of their children or this more maternal uh, attitude in the region. Yes, it's still this idea that the domestic sphere is, is where women should be, uh, and men, although they might be willing to move over, you know, to let women into the professional sphere, they're not taking up the slack in the domestic sphere. When it comes to violence against women, um, that still seems to be a major issue. Um, we have the disappeared women in Mexico, uh, we see other issues, different issues in Argentina, Colombia. Would you say that there has been a positive change or any improvement when it comes to violence against women in Latin America? No, unfortunately. It's extremely frustrating because we've been talking about it for so long. We have statistics. We know that 50% of women in Latin America have suffered some form of sexual assault. We know that femicides are not only not decreasing, they're on the rise in many countries, and yet it doesn't get better. There's special prosecutors, there's a whole range of government legislation. There's some things that could be done that haven't been done. Not all countries have ratified the CEDAW, which is the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, and that has to be done. But the biggest thing is that there's this environment, first of all, general environment of violence, where with the drug war and in Mexico, a lot of violence in general in the society, we also see this uptick in violence against women. But the other is impunity. If you don't prosecute crimes of violence against women, and they're not being prosecuted in a thorough manner in our countries, you're sending a message that you can get away with it. And that is what encourages this trend to continue. So that's got to be turned around. Which country do you think is doing the best job of turning that around, though? Well, we've seen a lot of advances in Bolivia. We've seen that Cuba has a very low rate of violence against women. And much of this has to do with how society gets involved in it. Because you can have all the legal structures you want, but unless that message gets down to society, this is not OK. You're not going to be able to do the enforcement. You're not going to be able to get the results that make women feel equal and safe in their own communities. Laura Carlson, thank you so much for joining us on America's Now. Thank you. America's Now.